All right. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Angelo Carlos podcast. We have my friend Joey here, who is actually a software engineer at Google. Uh, one of the coolest guys I've met. He's going to go over his whole career and how he went from mechanical engineering to software engineering. So very excited to kind of learn about that process. Um, Joey's actually based in the Bay Area at Google. Um, so really excited to pick your brain, Joey. And welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, by yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um, I know you said you're kind of um, working. Uh, how was the food today at Google? Anything good today uh, for oh. lunch? Yeah, actually, funny enough, I actually came into the office uh, after lunch, so I should have came earlier for the free food, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, sometimes I'm like, I'm too lazy. I'll I'll, uh, I'll go into the office later, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, sometimes you just go a little late, later, and I know uh, six six thirty they kind of have dinner, and the SFO right. office has like the best food. Everything's all plated too, right? So I think uh, you should be good to go, right? And you get to go. Well, I don't know if it's the best. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay. It's all right. All good. Where's your favorite food at Google, by the way? Before we start the the, the pod, where are you like? Where? Uh, I'm not sure actually. I've only uh, mostly eaten in around the SFO camp, like, uh, built offices. Um, but I heard there are some pretty unique stuff in South Bay, like the mm -hmm. ones where, like, it's a sit-down restaurant, basically. Yeah, so I haven't tried yeah. those. But, yeah. Definitely, you should definitely try those. I know uh, Levain, that's, like, a French restaurant MP, so in Sunnyvale. Okay. Um, you should, I think you'll like that. That one's not so much sit-down, but definitely the best quality of food I, I think I've had there. So you're, you're in a good spot, man. Cool. But yeah, I've... I appreciate you joining the podcast, my friend. Um, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, Joey's going to go over his, his experience as an engineer. And um, how, first, we're going to talk about kind of his background, how he got into everything. So why don't you tell us about yourself, Joey? Uh, where did you go to undergrad? Uh, did you do any internships or your time in undergrad? Feel free to take the stage, my friend. Sure, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> uh I let me let me so uh, you know as a background I I did mechanical engineering as my um, undergrad degree well the first undergrad degree um, I sort of just fell into engineering my parents kind of wanted me to study uh, science or something but uh, you know that's that, that's a path to you know to to go to like medicine or something then my, my dad was a doctor uh, but like I knew like that wasn't really for me and. I kind of like to build things and stuff, so uh, yeah, I just decided to do engineering. And after I got after first year engineering, I had to choose my major, and I uh, decided to go on mecha uh, mechanical engineering because we had access to a machine shop, um, so where I can like you know fool around and build things and stuff. Uh, maybe not the best reason <laughs> to choose a major, but uh, you know, there we have it. Uh, from there, I. Uh, I did a bunch of internships. Uh, some of them I did well in, some of them I didn't. Um, I remember uh, one of the ones I did, I'll talk about a couple of them. Um, there's one I did where uh, it was in the aerospace industry and it was, uh, uh, the role I worked in was um, uh, like lean engineering. Um, so like Six Sigma, Six, six, that six sigma uh, um, that kind of thing, how to uh, maximize uh, productivity, reduce waste, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> hence, lean. Um, and I, from that, I sort of like realized that aerospace is not like that cool. It was sorry. Let me be specific. It was uh, aerospace manufacturing. So manufacturing, they were they were manufacturing for uh, Boeing or Lockheed Martin or whatever. And I remember one engineering, one engineer, uh, senior engineer, telling me that uh, they had to uh, change the size of these like hole, like clearance holes on, in one of the parts, and took it like it took him like thirty minutes to you know uh, do that to change the drawing, uh, change the model, change the drawings and stuff, and took him the rest of the week to uh, get a you know stamp to talk to Boeing and get it like stamped by Boeing. Yep. I'm like, yeah, this this is like, you know, not the job for me. It's way too slow. Uh, and um, uh, I did some other internships I did while in, and then uh, I had another. I had a, in terms of the aerospace, I had a similar experience with um, a biomedical. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this was a um, 
uh, a place that did, uh, they focused on like, uh, they did like R and D for stent, like, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, things that you, doctors, cardiologists put into, uh, or cardiac surgeons, surgeons put into your like veins or arteries to, you know, uh, open up clogs and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I may state, uh, it was just like a lot of process for like everything. And, you know, it's, it's important, you know, the process is important because, you know, you're doing stuff like we weren't putting things into humans yet, but, you know, um, uh, eventually you we're, know, you know, putting things into animals and, uh, eventually into humans. So like everything needs to be like very meticulous. Right. Um, and like that was just not, it was just like not it for me. I like, I, I yeah. think I'm like the opposite of a detail oriented person. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me think here. Um, and after that, um, uh, at some point later on, I graduated and worked, uh, as a mechanical engineer in a, uh, in sawmill industry. So they, sawmill industry. So they, oh, saw uh, they did, uh, uh, they designed and produced, uh, sawmill machines in, in, in for sawmills. So, so basically, uh, think of a, um, processing, like a huge processing plant where you basically put in like trees, like, like actual like logs and then comes out like, you know, what planks come out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So these are like, I can't take like, uh, think little factories basically. Yeah. Yeah. Were, were all these internships in Canada or or here? It, fun fact: Joey's actually from from Canada, and you went to UBC, correct? Oh right, yes, right. I mentioned that. Yeah, I, I grew up mostly in Canada. I was born in Taiwan, but mostly grew up in Canada, and I went to University of British Columbia. Oh, that's pretty cool. A lot of engineers at Google I've met are all a lot of them are from Canada, UBC or or Waterloo. Yeah, probably mostly people. Waterloo. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Waterloo yeah. people. It's so smart. It's so cool. But yeah, cool. I, I didn't know you're from Taiwan too. I know the whole AI um, thing, especially with Nvidia, huge factories out in in Taiwan. That's kind of where the huge focus is right now. Right, right. That that's pretty cool. Um, your internships in college, they were all kind of on the mechanical engineering side. Um, right. I I remember when I was at Google X, uh, I was working on the aerospace side of things as well. Okay, and, okay. Talking about Boeing, uh, and how long it would take. I right. agree because a lot of our hardware that we were working on was also aerospace uh, involved right. at X, of course, like proprietary. But right. um, it does take a very, very long time for aerospace um, to kind of move and go forward. And I can right. sense you, you want that more of a kind of a quick turnaround time with launch exactly. products that that people will use the entire world. Um, right. So can you talk about that? You mentioned a lot of your hard, your uh, mechanical side, moving the software side. How did you learn the software side of things? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll talk about uh, talk about how I how or why I transitioned to software. Mm -hmm. um, so I was working my mechanical engineering job, the the full time job in the in the software industry, and like it was just like not it for me. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. like a lot of it was a small company, um, very uh, very traditional. Let's say um, the the culture was just like also not very healthy um mm -hmm. there's all like there, there was only 10 engineers and everyone's like most 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 of them were like 50 plus but there was just a lot of uh off uh, 50 plus and there was just a lot of office politics yeah. you know uh people would just like talk behind each other's back all the time and um and then like i felt even though it was a salary job um you know uh, i guess because it is very traditional. It was like, you know, you have to be in a seat like from like eight o'clock to like four thirty, you know. Mm -hmm. Not like for that. Not like the flexible work hours in uh in tech. And there was a lot of like finger pointing when things happen or stuff. Whereas in tech, you know, it's more about um uh how do you how do you prevent like prevention as opposed to, you know, you know, uh, uh assigning blame, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. So uh, I got fired from that job. <laughs> Just, <laughs> at least you keep me one on it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Very upfront, very upfront. Um, and uh, went home, you know, I told my parents and I mulled over it for like a few days. And then I told, I told them, hey, you know what? Uh, 
I think I'm going to go back to school for Cambridge Science. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they were like, WTF? It's <laughs> <laughs> not like five, six years in school doing internships and all that. And you're like, you, you don't work a job. You work a job like less than a year and you're going to go back to school again. Like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they were um, supportive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not that, yeah, we're supportive. It's like, oh, okay, well, we'll house you, you know, kind of support. Yeah, which is nice, that. right? It's like, it's, it's good, you know. Um, uh, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, they, they definitely questioned the decision at that time. Uh, there's a joke I tell my friends, um, yeah. well, tell, tell people I meet, you know, as, uh, which was that when I used to be a mechanical engineer, I got fired from a job. My, uh, my, uh, what is it? Uh, my, 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 um, my parents thought it was a fuck up. Right. Mm-hmm. And now that I got into Google, my parents <laughs> are proud of me and only my manager knows I'm a fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Dude, I'm right. proud of you, man. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, what, uh, I decided, uh, wasn't for me. I went back to school for CS and, and I realized I did a lot of thinking. I realized that why I why i like mechanical engineering as a student but maybe not so much in the industry as well as why i like uh programming and software engineering you know uh one uh, a few of the courses i really enjoyed it when i was a mechanical engineering uh, mechanical engineering student was the programming courses i didn't know why and you know, as, as you remember earlier i mentioned that i really like being in the machine shop and building things machine so basically I like building things. Uh, I like to design things, build things, uh, test things, you know, that iteration, right? And I realized that as a, uh, as someone working in the industry, you don't really get to do that. Like 95% jobs, you're, you're, you're not doing that. You know, maybe the few percent where you're doing like true R and D, you're, mm-hmm. you get to do that. Um, and also, um, let me think what else is there? Um, oh yeah. And also in traditional engineering, um, you know, you're not just mechanical engineering, right? Just any sort of engineering that's not tech. Uh, you're not you're not building, you're not inventing new things, right? Like how many yeah. uh, example is like how many t- uh, how many different types of like door handles have we seen on the car? You know, maybe oh, yeah. maybe like the you know the Tesla is a bit different, but like all the other ones, they, they were kind of the same, right? All the same. Yeah. They're, they're, obviously, the the detail in the tiny you know the tiny details in the design they're different, right? But like functionally, they're all the same. Um, so there's not really any real innovation for involved for most jobs. You're just like changing some existing some drawing to make a suit the new customer or whatever, right? Um, yeah, so so I think it was a big part. And also the thing with uh, being um, not being detail oriented most of the time in, in in software, you get to like test your program a bunch of times mm-hmm. and there's like different um, uh, pipelines, right? You know, you have your local environment, you have, you know, development environment, staging, and then after a while, it gets to production. Um, whereas, like, you're only going to build a bridge once. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, fingers crossed. Well, yeah. There have been, uh, historically, there have been bridges that collapse due to uh, poor engineering calculator. Yeah. So, jo- good thing I'm not, I'm not in the history books. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Now you're a really great engineer. Where, where did you go for your, your master's in CS? Uh, and then do you recommend our viewers, if they want to transition to the software engineering, do you recommend they do a master's or do you recommend they go to like a boot camp, which is now a popular route? Right, right. Uh, I actually, my school offered a bachelor's degree, uh, second degree bachelor's degree in uh, computer science. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so it's a, for anyone who already has a bachelor's degree in basically anything, doesn't have to be technical. Uh, and then it's a two year program, um, and, or three years with like co-op slash internships. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I did. There is a, we also had a, uh, I'm guessing similar program, but it gives you a master degree. Um, but it costs like three times as much for I like that. Yeah. <laughs> for, for probably the same end results in terms of like the jobs you get, um, in terms of the question regarding your question about um, uh, whether to do boot camps or uh, schooling, I think it really depends. It seems like boot camps are the boot camp graduates now are 
uh, there's basically too many boot camps and too many boot camp graduates now, especially with the uh, tech industry being, uh, you know, in the right now we're in a recession and recession and yeah. the tech industry being more sensitive to, um, you know, the state of the economy, I think. So I think if you do boot camp right now, it might not be the best. But if you do, if you can go to like, uh, you know, do a four year degree, uh, hopefully by the time you finish, uh, the economy will be better. Also, um, like if you do boot camp right now and you don't get a job, then you're just like sitting on your ass for a while. And, and it, it can look weird on your resume. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Even, even if you fill in with like some other jobs, uh, that's, that's not like in the industry. But if you finish, uh, by the if you finish your degree and uh, and then can get your like get in a few years, line your job uh, up that way, then you don't have a resume gap, and maybe that could be better. Mm, great advice, yeah, great advice. Yeah, no, agreed. The tech industry is kind of like in this weird recession right now, especially with with the advent of AI. A lot of companies are laying off, and then um, maybe it does look better if you get a master's. Um, however, that. I, I do know that there are a lot of master's degrees, especially in the U.S., that are around like one year, especially if you have a bachelor's already that you can apply mm -hmm. to. Um, I got into like one at Vanderbilt uh, for master's in CS before choosing UCLA. So I've seen that one year program to kind of churn you out. You learn your CS and you get out, um, right. which is which is an option too. But Joey, like you said, right. yeah, right. Um, you may have that weird um, kind of uh, brief um, stint in your resume where you're not doing much if you don't get a job after school but don't let that deter you from from keeping on applying yeah for sure so, so why don't we talk about your your time at, at google what was the interview process like what was the application process like uh when you applied to to google sure um so let me think here uh so i applied to google back in early 2020 uh, I was uh, I was in my old job uh, at Yelp, and then I switched to uh, I wanted to switch jobs. Um, and let me think here. I think I I already had you know I think Google is great at reaching out to you know potential candidates. So I mm -hmm. just found one of the emails where they reached out to me, and be like, hey, you yeah. know, yeah, do you want to interview? Give me an interview now. Uh, <laughs> and basically, yeah, of course, I. I had already previously interviewed with Google and not gotten in once uh, for internship and then one after uh, for full time. And so uh, th this time around, we've been the third time. Um, and so after that, so I talked to a recruiter and I think they, if I recall, I did do a phone into uh, straight to a, a technical phone interview. Uh, so that's like a 45 phone, phone interview for a 45 minute phone interview. And then uh, hiring manager or the recruiter? Uh, this is with uh, uh, in, um, like an engineer. An engineer, okay, perfect. Yeah, so it's like a regular coding interview. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, f within a few days, the recruiter uh, reached out to me and said, hey, like, you did well. Do you want to do your like on-site? Like mm -hmm. on-site? Because, you know, at that time, uh, everything is virtual. So my on-sites oh, were all right. virtual. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... For the on-site, uh, it was also uh, you basically it takes the whole day. It was four, uh, I mean, oh, sorry, it was five back-to-back -back, uh, uh, interviews. Uh, four of them being technical, one of them being uh, behavioral. Uh, that that one's pretty, you know, easy. Yeah, uh, and there's a lunch break in there somewhere. Um, one, uh, not a, not exactly that funny, but one thing I found very uh nice about um tech industry is i think people are more forgiving i think i alluded to this earlier yeah um uh so for one of the interviews so i said you know five in one day right i actually yeah. misread the time oh wow i'm like completely missed it i just like no did, i just no show right <laughs> i just like <laughs> like no show and then i emailed the recruiter and i just like said oh uh I forgot what I said. Uh, I said maybe. Uh, I think I, I didn't. I forgot whether I said the time, or misread the time, or like maybe I BS them. I said, uh, "Oh, uh, you sent me like the wrong link." To, I don't know what. Yeah. But I don't think it mattered, right? You know, uh, I think I think they, uh, they're pretty uh, lenient and understanding, uh, and they just rescheduled me for something like the next day. But like, 
this would not have, like fly at all in like a traditional engineering job. Oh, like agreed. They're, yeah. yeah, they're very, very much about like, you know, you can't make mistakes. Like, whereas in tech, it's more about like, okay, well, you know, pe people are humans. People are, are going to make mistakes. And, you know, how do we make the system better so, so that it doesn't happen? Yeah. No, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad there's much more lenient. And I agree, especially kind of being in California, being at Google. Um, there is more humanistic aspect of the job, um, and especially with the interview, that, which is really good. So right. Joey kind of touched on something that is really interesting. Uh, Google is about five or six rounds uh, of interviews for both uh, engineering, business, product, whatever it may be. And what happens is during those five or six rounds, you're going to get interviewed by, uh, I believe the first is the recruiter, and then about five people from Google. And that may not be the team you're on, but different teams. And then they'll basically judge you on whether or not you get the role, right? You could be, I believe it's like during interviews, like strong hire, strong, no hire. Right. Um, and if you get all five strong hires, you're instantly kind of pushed into a hiring. Uh, you're right. instantly hired. But if you get around three or four strong hires, you still have to go to a hiring committee. And that is where a lot of Googlers um, will just basically kind of debate your profile, whether or not they think you're a good fit. And if they pass you on, you, you'll get hired. Um, so that's, that's kind of where it, it was there. Uh, with with how Google works, Joey, can you talk about the technical interview process? I know the first interview, right? Because we've interviewed Google recruiters before. Yeah. The first round is just usually with the recruiter. They just want to make sure you're a cool person, make sure you know what you're yep. talking about. Yep. And then the next few rounds are technical. Can you talk yes. about the technical interview process? Did you get to pick what language you got to code in? Uh, how was like doing it remote? Sure. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> let me think here. Uh, so like I mentioned, everything's remote. Um, in terms of uh, what programming language, this is something you communicate to your recruiter ahead of time. And then, then they will internally, you know, they will only uh, pick uh, interviewers that, uh, uh, you know, that are comfortable with, you know, the language you've picked, basically. Um, yeah, so for me, I picked Python. Good um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like very, you know, it's it's good for interviewing, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't feel like it's a good language for like production code though. Cause, uh, I, I previously worked at Yelp, which was a Python shop and, oh, was it really? um, yeah, I, like I, basically everything was Python and that made it, you know, made life kind of painful because I feel <laughs> I, I used to love Python until I joined Yelp. Um, it's a great language for writing, but it's terrible for like reading. Mm -hmm. And then I went to join Google and then, you know, in my first team, I, uh, uh, I had to like basically relearn Java, but like it's great for like read a build, like reading and knowing what's on what's going on mm -hmm. because everything's like very explicit. But man, is it painful to write? Yeah, Java's hard. Yeah, Python's yeah. a lot more straightforward. I could write. So, uh, let me think here. Yeah, so for tech for the technical for interviews, uh, most of them are uh, like so four 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 of them were coding. Um, so. Uh, they give you. They usually give you like a warm up problem. You solve that, and then they sometimes build on it to make it more difficult. Or sometimes they ask you a different problem altogether. Uh, so usually you expect like one small problem and then one like like real problem, so to speak. Yeah. Um, for and I interviewed for sort of for like a junior mid level uh, loop, um, and but for I believe for like. Uh, if you're interviewing higher level positions, if you have more years of experience, they will usually throw in one or two system design rounds in there. Oh, system design. I didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the uh, actual coding interviews, um, it was, I would like to mention, virtual. Um, so I, had to, I got to use my keyboard. Uh, a lot of, pre from talking to my friends, I think a lot of people preferred um, being able to use, you know, some kind of editor they're familiar with or just like being really able to type code. Whereas, uh, you know, historically before COVID, you know, the, the on-sites were in person. So you had to write your code in on the, uh, whiteboard. Um, I actually prefer that. I think, um, because on the whiteboard, uh, you know, it's, it's not just about like, if you can write the code or not, right. The coding interviews, it's about, it's about whether you solve the, you can solve the problem or like how, how you solve a problem. So a lot of times, uh, you want to like be able to draw diagrams. Um, to, to, to like explain your approach first before you write code. Um, so, and then, you know, obviously on a whiteboard, it's easier, to, it's easier to draw diagrams on a whiteboard. Um, uh, and also, and like interviewers are a lot of times could be more lenient, um, mm -hmm. in terms of like small mistakes on a whiteboard. 
uh, just because, you know, they, well, they may not even catch it themselves. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, well, they, they may chalk it up as you know, handwriting or just like they so a gloss over where it's on, on, a, uh, on a keyboard uh, when it, on a text editor, it's more obvious when you have some kind of uh, syntax or, you know, some kind of thing where you know, the, the, prog the program won't compile or whatever. Mm, that that's great advice. Thank you for for sharing that. I know the technical uh, portion is always the biggest kind of fear for most engineers when they go into that interview. Uh, with regards to prepping for the interview, how did you prepare for it? Was it a lot of just preparing some leak code hard, some leak code medium, some easies? What what was okay. prep? Yeah, uh, missing here. Uh, I think one thing I but mostly just the the leak code, and one thing I liked. Uh, about Google is that we, it seems like we try to ask questions that haven't been like, you know, that have, that haven't been like used too much that aren't like, you know, well, I think interviewers try to ask like or, original ish questions, ish questions. Yeah. yeah ish <laughs> being offered, offered, offered. <laughs> um, uh, and at the same time though, I think most depending on the interviewer, right. They may not ask, uh, I, I don't, I think we try not to ask questions that are overly esoteric. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, I think this also depends on the interviewer as well as where in the, uh, like which, uh, Google, uh, sort of Google office slash region you're interviewing for. For example, I've heard if you're interviewing for like, uh, if you're interviewing for like a position in India, you know, mm -hmm. they, they can ask like pretty difficult questions. Oh, really? Um, yeah, like in Hyderabad. But at the same time, um, even if an uh, interviewer asks you a very, very difficult question, then you know it's not the end of the world because they ask the same question to everyone, and mm -hmm. you know you just have to be better than the other people, so to speak. It's not whether it's not like on the objective measure whether you solve the problem or not necessarily. Got it, got it. So you kind of get the whole body of work. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in a sense, how you think. Yeah. If I can add something else quickly. Of course. Uh, for example, uh, on, at, a, at Facebook, I've heard where uh, interview, uh, recruiters will basically say, oh, yeah, do like Lico Hard. Uh, yeah. That are tagged Facebook because they will, they will ask those questions and they will ask those hard questions, but like you can prepare for them, right? Like they, you know, they, you, you, they, you basically know, you know, these are the finite list of questions they'll ask. Uh, so I think for someone who sucks at studying and remembering things, mm -hmm. um, Google is easier for me, uh, just cause like you can more easy to like wing it basically, uh, where it's for Facebook, um, if you, if you're good at grinding, uh, that's probably easier if you're good at like, uh, um, uh, like role map, not like role memorization per se, but good. If you're good at recall, then I recall, uh, you know, and, or just like studying and stuff that, Facebook's probably easier. Yeah, no, it, it's fascinating how di each different fan company is when it comes to interviewing. Um, I, I agree. I think when I interviewed at, at Google, it was a lot more relaxed, a lot more chill. And then at Meta, it, it was kind of like I, I felt like I had to like really be on, on game, yeah. on point. So I agree with you 100% there. What's the engineering talent like at, at Google? How do you feel like you're working with with uh, really great engineers? Um, yeah. Do you feel like you're always trying to make impact within your firm? Well, uh, good question. Uh, I definitely feel like I, uh, I didn't feel like everyone is smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as has gonna be right. <laughs> Quite a few words. No, I mean that's a good thing. I think. Uh, yeah, well, it could be worse. Uh, it's probably better that than being, you know, the smartest person in the room, so to speak, because then you just like won't hear anything. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, Funny, funny thing though, um, in terms of the engineering talent and whatever, uh, before I joined Google, you know, look from, from outside looking in, I always thought Google is this, um, um, uh, magic palace or not, or like some, you know, the epitome of, uh, you know, engineering excellence or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <clears throat> that's just like the. You know, impression, but after I joined, I'm like, no, <laughs> that's just far from the truth. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't mean right? that in terms of like the, uh, I don't mean that in terms of like the engineering quality or the talent. I mean that in terms of like, you know, um, uh, how well things are documented or 
uh, how you know how uh, maintainable are the the is the code and the system we create. But you know, it, at the end of the day, do the, the at the at the end of the day, Google is not a company. We're trying to ship right, and you have to, you have the deadlines. Uh, you, you can only spend so much time on writing like good code. You, you, if you got a deadline, you got to ship. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, it's so funny. Yeah. I completely agree with you. Like even in the business and product side, um, it, at cloud, I, I think we always talked about how like you're building a plane and you're flying it at the same time. <laughs> so, so there's like documentation is just everywhere. And you you go on Momo trying to find some stuff. You don't know what's going on. And it's yep. everyone's just trying to figure it out. And everyone has like a thousand tabs open. For <laughs> Yeah, so, at least we have a good internal search engine that can, you know, the best, really. I mean, I, I don't, I can't imagine what it is like being elsewhere uh, here. I heard that uh, Meta is not as good. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, uh, MoMA is, I, I think, was the, the best, like, internal search engine I've, I've used just to find internal stuff. Right. And then at Meta, you're using, like, the, the Facebook feed to find everything. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, man, I got to buy this. I have a meeting right now. So oh, yeah, I think Momo was the best, and and you actually like, uh, you you know G Suite's really good too. So a lot of people use G Suite at, at Google, so that's always good for for an internet company. Yeah, for sure. So I want to ask you about what do you currently work on at Google, and um, what what's like any projects you feel like comfortable sharing that you kind of work on? Yeah, any impact? Uh, yeah. So I work on the engineering productivity um side for Google Cloud. Uh, databases. So I explain what that means. Um, so you know, uh, on GCP or Google Cloud Platform, there's a bunch of products, and there's a bunch of database products. And the one I was working on uh, before uh, when I first joined Google was called Firestore, mm -hmm. uh, and it's that's our um, our NoSQL database, um, which then our competitors are like MongoDB. MongoDB. Um, our main competitors like MongoDB or something like that. Um. Uh, and and what does engineering product productivity mean? Uh, it basically means test infrastructure. Uh, so if uh there are the engineering engineers and engineering teams that work on the the feature or product side, and then they maybe they have like some uh you know uh, feature idea and you know they something some feature they want to build they come to us and be like hey like you know we want to build this thing but we don't have like a good way to test it. Um, and then you know we work together to solve that problem for them that, that's pretty cool and yeah. um what's your day-to-day -day like with regards to to this um are you kind of in meetings all day um are you are you working with several stakeholders how does it work yeah uh i think right now uh i guess i have a good mix of meetings and just head down time i'm not like mm -hmm. uh senior enough to be like oh you know i'm in meetings all day oh i don't get to toad anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. Not there you yet. get there. <laughs> Maybe one day. I don't know. I don't know when I get there, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because uh, I think most engineers do like, you know, like to uh, like to code. Not necessarily read. Not necessarily write code, but like uh, like to build things, right? Um, and being stuck in meetings all day is probably what not what they sign up for originally. Mm -hmm. Um. So I get a good mix. A lot of my meetings are just like one-on-ones with uh, uh, other people. Uh, a lot of times it's just, you know, me getting help with it from them or talk about random stuff, you know, just get, uh, um, one thing I learned is that it's, especially a big company like Google, it's really good to uh, network. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, have try to get like recording one-on-ones with like, uh, 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 other engineers, whether it's on your team or on your uh, sister teams. Um, uh, uh, one realization I had pretty recently in the past like half a year is when uh, when when you have a problem uh, and you ping and you find out who to ask, right? You ping them or and you schedule something ad hoc to yep. get them to help you, or or even if you just message them uh, and then they reply to you, they're like. Their mentality is okay. They're doing a favor, right? They're taking time away from whatever the hell they're doing uh, to 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 help you. But 
if you have a recurrent, if you have a regular one-on-one -on -one with them, like maybe once a week, every other week, whatever. Um, even even if it's you going to, even as you getting help from them every single time, they won't feel that. They would feel like they're just doing their job. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's so that's something I, I realized uh, pretty uh, you know in the past half a year or something. <laughs> yeah, that that's yeah. so funny and yet so true, right? Yeah. And even even though they're, they're giving, they're committing more of their time to you, it doesn't feel like they're doing you a favor because mm -hmm. they already established that time. Exactly. Like, yeah, and you have that, yeah, and you have that, uh, you have that working relationship. Um. So as um, uh, so. Uh, you know they're familiar with your work, and they can like, uh, you know, speak uh, to the quality of your work and whatever, right? Even even if the, even if, um, like I said, even if it's you getting help from them every time, single time, just because you have like human connection, they'll probably feel they'll probably uh, be less inclined to speak poorly of you when it comes to like giving giving uh, uh, feedback for performance just because like, oh, you know, he's such a nice guy. Like, I don't really want to like give him uh, like a bad rating. Like in this, like, maybe this is not that conscious, right? It could be at least subconscious. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> that is so fascinating. You mentioned that. I completely agree, right? The humanistic aspect of working with your coworkers, having that that recurring meeting looks really good on you. It can also lead to like a lot of peer bonuses you get at Google, which are really big in the company because you have to give around seven or eight, right? Or else it just goes away. Um, Joey, can you talk about networking, right? I know this was super big at Google, especially during port reviewing during grad. Um, what advice do you have for engineers or people in tech who want to get good perf reviews um, or do well on grad, which is Google's form of your performance review? Right. Uh, I think there's a bunch of things. I'm not the best person here to uh, ask about this, but I'll try my best because uh, this is something I, you know, need to. I realize I need to work on more. Um, but obviously, pick, um, talk to your stakeholders, pick like high impact projects, or, or not. See, impact doesn't have to be impact or performance doesn't have to be real. It just needs to be perceived. That's right. So fast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> continue. Yeah. I'm not saying like. You know, uh, to to I'm not I'm not saying that as in like oh fake your stuff or or be a phony or whatever. Just like I'm saying more like if uh, there well, gives me these two things, right? If um if there's a project you feel is is going to be higher impact, but then all your stakeholders say, oh no, no, I would think we want to do this because of the whatever reasons. It's gonna take you so much work to convince them otherwise. Right, and and they probably have good reasons too. So sometimes you just gotta give the customers what they want, right? Just <laughs> uh, and the other uh, aspect is um, uh, the other aspect is uh, um, uh, I said perceived performance, right? So a lot of times it's not about the absolute quality of your work; it's about how you present your work. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> Um, for example, at Google, there's this uh, culture of writing docs, right? Uh, writing documentation. Yeah, huge doc culture. Design docs, uh, retrospectives, uh, you know, future planning, whatever, right? Um, and as engineers, we write code, right? But people aren't going to be, when it comes to performance review, the, people aren't going to be reading your code, right? They're going to be mm -hmm. reading, trying to figure out what's the why did you write this code like what's the impact of this code right so so they're going to be reading docs and be like okay you know first we had this problem and then we did we built this feature and we saw 3x improvement blah 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 right they, they, they want to see that right so it's about mm -hmm. um so it's about the the perceived uh i can be the most amazing most amazing engineer and write a bunch of code but if i don't write any docs people aren't at least at google people aren't gonna know what the hell i did i'm gonna have a poor rating <clears throat> That's it's it's so fascinating you mentioned that because I remember my manager always told me um, perception is reality, even though it might not be fair. Perception is reality, especially at Google. So yes. he was always pushing us to like write more documentation, really advertise your work. I had mm -hmm. a friend; it was so crazy. She it was like a year and a half. So she came on as L four, got promoted to L six in about a year and a half or almost two years. It was really Oops. quick. Yeah, and her. We kind of like dissected how she did it. She was telling me 
she would always send emails out to like the the broader organization on any updates she had on projects, what she was doing. She kind of created her own newsletter. So the right. perception was that she's working really hard, but she was working really hard. Right. She's having impact because the whole org knows what she's doing. I so see. if you get some high impact projects, create a newsletter so people are up there aware of what you're doing. You're right. going to, during perf review, during grad, you're going to actually, you know, get good reviews. Right. And then you you get that excellent rating. You you can get promoted much quicker. So that sense, yeah. it's like a little um, little hack you you don't really realize unless you're at Google for a while, unless you've been working at a company for a while, how the whole kind of corporate hierarchy kind of works. So right. yeah, Joey, thank you for sharing your advice too um, with, with regards to really networking with your peers and then making sure that they know what you're doing so that way um you get your um your good reviews and you get you kind of move up in your career for sure for sure ask you one uh question with regards to um with regards to people who want to get a job at google what advice do you have for them whether they're becoming straight up undergrad or whether they're trying to make a career transition to work at google any any advice or key tips you have joe oh, okay um hmm, let me think here i think google is pretty uh lenient in terms of like who they are willing to interview, at least it, that used to be the case before, you know, uh, the more recent economic downturn. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say uh, do enough to, you know, get get do enough to, you know, build up, you know, some uh, somewhat of a res technical resume in terms of like technical experience. Um, I don't know if going to a boot camp itself is enough, but if you went to like a half decent um you know school for computer science they'll probably give you a shot especially if you have like you know some minimum uh, in, uh, uh internship experience uh, and then for you know after that you just have to prepare for interview right i would just say um do you really code <laughs> yeah and get good at get good at programming i'm kind of surprised that you know because i was uh, uh i did uh, I, I was doing interview. I was interviewing candidates, and I was surprised by the overall lack of uh, how common it is for candidates to not be able to like write like pretty to to solve pretty simple problems or write, oh, write pretty simple code. And and you know probably a lot of them is just because they're nervous. Yeah. Um. But yeah, just be comfortable. Um. You, uh, and it could be. You know, maybe your technical chops are there, but you just need to uh, have more experience uh, doing mock interviews. Have someone like um, give you that like pressure of, you know, uh, so practice with friends or something. You know, what what advice do you have for someone who's interviewing at Google to get a strong hire? Like, what makes them stand out? Uh, okay, yeah, hire. Um, like definitely, uh, you need to be able to solve the problems. Um, uh, so being good at problem solving and uh, you know, uh, and writing good code, but I think also being able to um, take your time and like explain what you uh, explain your thought process and uh, approach like in a very clear uh, manner. Um, I made the mistake uh, when I was first entering for Google back uh, doing my uh, for I was looking for internship. I, you know, there's that. I think it's pretty common for candidates to just like freeze because they're nervous or they don't know how to solve the problem, so they just like don't say anything and just you know. And there's this uh, advice people give is like, oh, just like talk out loud. And I think I took that approach like too literally. Oh, okay. Well, it was just like you know, <laughs> word spaghetti, right? Yeah, like they probably don't know what the fuck I'm talking to saying. Uh, <laughs> and then mid sentence, oh, but, but also blah blah blah. Oh, but what if I, you know? Yeah, and they probably just don't know what I'm talking about. Um. Uh. So I think it's okay if you slow down and and just like come up with like some approach. This is not the best, and talk uh, through through it with your interviewer. Be like, okay, here's some thinking. I'm gonna, you know, because of this, I'm gonna do this and try to blah blah blah. Right. And you're, so you want to be as linear as possible in your uh, thought process. It's it's okay to have a little bit of word spaghetti in the in the beginning to sort of figure out you know where you're you know to get your initial grounding, but after that you want to be uh, more methodical in your explanation. 
Okay. That's awesome. No, I, I appreciate that's great advice, especially for our, our viewers who are wanting to kind of be in your position to work at Google as a software engineer. Also in general, for, for those who are trying to get into that software engineering career, um, you, you've done so much with your career with regards to making that transition from mechanical engineering to software engineering and working at like, I guess the pinnacle right now, of what most people see in tech at Google. So I'm very proud of you, my friend, keep on doing an amazing job. And we always love to end the podcast on one last question. So Joder, sure. what is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self, whether it be about your life or your career? What, what advice would that be? Ooh, okay. I'm going to think about this. Um, if I, um, <laughs> This is kind of funny. Um, I don't know if there's a right one, but this is one. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of two. Uh, so I'm going to say the um, the nicer version of it, which is like uh, be a better listener. Um, mm -hmm. Like really put aside your ego and like, you know, listen to what they've got to say. And the, and the reason why I said this uh, is um, I sort of, got asked a question uh, a long time ago in an interview uh, where the manager, the hiring manager asked me, what is the harshest uh, feedback someone has ever given you? And the answer I gave them was when I was in high school, uh, I had a friend that told me, I had a close friend that told me, Joey, it doesn't matter if you're right, if nobody likes you. <laughs> and, and funny enough, I argue with, with, with them about that. <laughs> So, uh, oh, man. yeah, just, uh, you know, I'm less ego. You're not always right. Uh, even if you tend to be right, you know, it's good to have different perspective and, and try to listen to other people without judgment. Mm -hmm. um, and that will not just not only expand your knowledge or horizon, but also, you know, build better relationships and, um, you know, make other feel seen, feel valued and seen and heard. That's awesome, Rela. I appreciate that. That's some great advice, especially especially for those who are just kind of in their career or, or just trying to like look for life advice. Right. I appreciate that, Joey. Yeah. So thank you so much, man. Um, you're definitely an inspiration. Just seeing where you came from, look coming from UBC, going over to do your your masters um, in CS, and then just kind of going through all the bumps in life, and then still ending up at Google and and excelling in your role. So Joey, man, thank you so much for joining the the podcast. This is so fun. I had a lot of fun, like laughing with you and just learning what it's like being a software right. engineer at Google. It, it's been a great time. My brother will definitely hang out soon uh, when, when sure. I'm back in the Bay. So sure, uh, sure. with that being said, uh, Jello family, appreciate you guys watching the podcast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll leave uh, Joey's Instagram down below if you want to reach out to him, talk to him, one of the smartest guys I know. And I hope you learned a ton from, from this podcast. So Jello family, thank you so much. And Joey, you're the man. I appreciate you so much and have an amazing day, guys. Peace. Thanks for having me.